Okay, we're going to look at solving some exponential equations. And when we look at solving them, we're going to be using the equivalence property of exponential expressions. And so what that says is really if you have um, b to the x equal b to the y, so if the bases are matching, then you know that the exponents have to be equal to each other. A uh, quick comment about b is that it's greater than 0, so it's positive. It doesn't equal 1 because that would kind of be boring because 1 to any power, well, that's just really equal to the constant function 1. So we're talking about exponential functions that we've already been looking at. And so, again, if we have b to the x equals b to the y, then we know the exponents have to be equal. And the reason for that is because we have exponential functions that are functions and one-to-one. -one. So if you have these inputs um, getting you the same outputs, then those inputs have to be equal. So when we look at problems 5, 6, and 7 here, what we're trying to do is see if we can make those bases be the same. Because if we can, then we can use that equivalence property. So if we look at this first one, I have a base of 5. There's really no other way to write 5 here. But then 125, I can write that as 5 to the third power. 5 times 5 is 25 times 5, that's 125. And so we have that 5 to the 3x minus 1 is equal to 5 to the third. So if we have that these bases are matching each other, move, then we know that this exponent has to be equal to that exponent. So 3x minus 1 has to equal 3, and then we're going to solve that equation, which is just a linear equation, just like normal. We get 3x equals 4, divide by 3, divide by 3. So we have x equals 4 thirds. All right. So now if we look at number six, so again, we're trying to see if we can make the bases match each other. So when I look at the number one fourth, that's kind of like, well, I know four is two to the second power. Um, let's see, if we look at the right side of the equation, we look at the number eight, oh, well that, that has a two in it. That's two times two times two. So we're gonna have eight is two to the third power. So I'm just rewriting the eight. Still have the same exponent right there. And then we're going to rewrite, let's see, 4 can be 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 2 squared. But the bases still aren't exactly the same because we have like this fraction going on. So I want to rewrite 2 squared actually. Um, if I want to flip it, remember we can do that by having a negative exponent. So if I write it that way and then use our property of exponents that when you have a power to power you multiply, this becomes 2 to the 3x. And so now we have the same bases, so then our exponents have to be equal. So we have negative 2 equals 3x, which is now just a linear equation, divide by 3. And so we get that x is equal to negative 2 thirds. All right, then we look at number seven here. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to make the bases match. So one thing, if you look at them and you're not sure, I mean, eight and four isn't too bad, but anytime you're not sure, you can always just break it up into its prime factors and see what you notice. So eight is four times two and four is two times two. So it's made up of two times two times two. And the number four is two and two. So we see lots of twos going on. So two is gonna be a base we can use that matches. So we're going to rewrite 8 as 2 to the 3rd. We're going to write 4 as 2 to the 2nd. And keep everything else still there. This has an exponent of x plus 3. It's equal to, and 4 has an exponent of 5 minus 2x. So we're just trying to rewrite our base numbers a little bit differently. Um, so we don't see 8 and 4 anymore, but we see lots of 2s. Now using our exponent rule, we can multiply our exponents together here and here. So then that becomes 2 to the 3x plus 9 is equal to 2 to the 10 minus 4x. So now that we have the bases matching, then the exponents have to be equal to each other. So we'll rewrite this as 3x plus 9 is equal to 10 minus 4x. It's a linear equation, but this time we have x's on both sides of our equation, so we're going to move those guys around. We'll move the 4x over, move the 4x over. We get 7x plus 9 is equal to 10. Move the 9 over. We get 7x is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 7, 
and we end up that x is equal to 1 7. So for these past three questions, we were able to make them have um, the bases where they match each other. So that way we were able to use this equivalence property where bases match, we can have equal exponents. So then you guys got to have a question, right? Right, right? I know it, I know it. So what if you can't write them as having matches bases, right? That's your question? Well, let's take a look at number eight. So number eight says we have two to the x equals seven, and two and seven are prime. And so there's no way that we can make those bases match. But what we can do, because those two quantities are equal, that means that natural log of those two quantities also has to be equal to each other. Because log functions are functions and they're one to one. And so if these things are equal, then natural log of those two inputs is also going to have to be equal. And the reason why we want to do that is because once we have a log, remember the property of log said if our argument had a power on it, we could bring that to the front. And what that allows us to do is have our x value on kind of the normal line that we're used to. Now, the rest of this looks kind of weird. It's like, whoa, you just complicated things. But natural log of 7 and natural log of 2, those are really just numbers. So the only variable here is x. And so if I want x to go away, well, it's just like having like a 2 or something like right here next to x. How do we make that go away? How do we undo that? Well, we'll just divide by it. We'll divide by natural log of 2 on both sides to maintain that balance. And so those will cancel out. And we are left with x is equal to natural log of 7 divided by natural log of 2. And we call this the exact answer. But often what we'll want to do, especially when you want to kind of double check your answer, is find the approximation. So in your calculator, if you take natural log of 7 and then divide that by natural log of 2, you're going to end up with about 2.81. Again, one of the main reasons I like to look at the approximation is that way I can check that I'm right. So like a quick check using your calculator is to find out what's 2 to the 2.81. I mean, just even thinking about it, if I have 2 squared, that's 4. 2 to the 3rd is 8. So 2 squared, that's 4. 2 to the 3rd is 8. So if you look at our exponent, 2.81, that's going to be close to 8. And so it looks like our answer is pretty good. It's supposed to be 7. But if I punch into the calculator, let's see what happens. I get 2 to the 2.81. On my calculator, I'd enter 2, that caret button. Or maybe some of you guys have like an x to the y button. And you're going to write 2.81. When you do that, we get about 7.01. So again, it's close because we had to make an estimate here and we um, round it. All right, we got one more exponential equation. Again, all of these are exponential equations because the variable is in the exponent. So this one looks a little weird because we see the e, but remember e is about 2.71, so it's just a number. Um, before I try and make bases match, though, I have some other things happening. Um, I have this little 4 hanging out, and I also have a 3 hanging out. I want to get rid of those things. So you want to try and isolate that exponential expression first. So if I want to make that 4 go away, I'm just going to subtract it because it's being added. So minus it from both sides. That cancels out. And we're left with 3e to the 2x is equal to 11 minus 4, or that's 7. And then I want to get rid of um, the 3 as well. So I'm going to divide by 3 because it's being multiplied. So undo that to divide. Divide. And so right now I'm back to having my exponential function e to the 2x is alone. And so then I try and say, okay, can I make my bases match? Well, that's 2.7 something and that's a fraction. So not like the last page, it's a little bit harder to try and 
well, I don't even know how you would make those bases match. So it makes me really um, want to apply a logarithm. Now, I use natural log. You can really use any log with any base. Natural log is a common one that you'll use, or log, the common log. And that's because there's buttons for those on your calculator, so they help you with finding approximations. Um, here, I for sure want to use natural log because natural log had that base of E. And so if you remember, if I'm going to take natural log of both sides here, I'm going to take natural log, natural log, and I'm going to take my power on that E to the front because that's my property of log. So I'm going to have 2x times natural log of E. But if you remember, natural log of E is actually really nice because it's log with a base of E of E. So this is saying E to what power equals E? Well, that just has to be a 1. So we just erase all that, and we know the answer to that question is 1. So this part right here, natural log of E, becomes 1 times and we still have the 2x, and we have the natural log of 7 thirds, which natural log of 7 thirds, that's still just a number. So we can then um, rewrite all of this as just 2x equals natural log of 7 thirds. Divide both sides by 2, and so we have x equals natural log of 7 thirds over 2, which if you want to use property of log, you could rewrite the top as natural log of 7 minus natural log of 3 over 2 if you like. Both of them are fine. So these are called our exact values. Um, if I plug that into my calculator, natural log of 7 thirds divided by 2 or natural log of 7 minus natural log of 3 divided by 2, my approximate value will end up being 0.424.